In the tiny little village of Parno, Slovakia, not too far from Vienna, Austria, live two master craftsmen, Draho and Eva Rosic. They're the owners of Soulboardy and the makers of what I believe to be the finest surf skate decks on the market. Eva actually just had their third child within, I think, just the last couple of months, and she personally burned by hand my logo into my Soulboardy. Draho started studying the art of deck building when he was just eight years old and he was living under communist rule and so literally the only thing he could do was watch TV and he would sit with a remote control on record on his little VCR and he would watch as much snowboarding and skateboarding footage as he could watch find on TV and he would hit record on those little seconds of, of snippets where he could see a deck up close and then he would spend hours pouring over that footage just looking up close as, as closely as possible to try to figure out how they were making these decks. And then from there, he would have to beg, borrow, or steal materials to start experimenting with building. Now, 33 years later, Draha has emerged as a master craftsman with a revolutionary new surf skate design, which so happens to be called the Soulboardy Revolution. Now they currently offer two models of the Revolution, the 34 inch Adam, which I have, and then the smaller 31 inch Eva. And after buying 40 surf skates and trying a lot more than that from friends, this Soul Boardy is by far my favorite surf skate deck, and I want to tell you why. The first thing I'm going to do is take you on a visual tour of the Soul Boardy deck as compared to seven other surf skate decks from popular surf skate companies. And I want to do that because I think that visual alone will give you enough of an idea of what there is to love about this Soul Boardy. And then after that visual tour, I'll explain to you what I love about the Soul Boardy. And then to finish out the review, I have a special guest joining me, and that is my friend Gavin Conti out of South Carolina, who you may have seen in my wheel review. Gavin was the first person to ever buy a Soul Boardy in the US, and then right after he got it, he told me about it, so I got mine shortly after he got his. So I think that Gavin and I have the first two Soul Boardies to ever land in the US. So after I tell you what I love about the Soul Boardy, then Gavin will do the same, and you'll hear from him a more technical explanation of what makes the Soul Boardy so special. So let's get started.
got into surf skating, I was new to all board sports. I'd only been longboarding for about eight months before I stepped onto a surf skate. And so coming at the whole thing from a fresh perspective as a non-surfer, I really had no idea what it was supposed to feel like or what a deck was supposed to feel like, how it was supposed to be constructed. So for me, it was just kind of looking at the whole thing from scratch without expert eyes. The more surf skate decks I rode, the more it became clear to me what I was looking for in a a surf skate deck and they were all things that to me seemed very obvious and I was actually really confused why all the other surf skate companies weren't building surf skate decks this way and it made me even question me as an inexperienced rider to think like what am I not understanding here and so then after experimenting all of these other decks from all these other companies and then getting my soul boardy I stepped onto the soul boardy and I was like this is exactly what I've been saying a surf skate deck should be all along. Again, not from the eyes of an expert, but from the eyes of a total beginner who was just analyzing the feel of a surf skate and what we're doing, right? You're, you wanna be locked in place because we have, when we're pumping, we have a lot of lateral side to side force. And so I always felt like I wanted good foot placement, I wanted good concave so that I could handle those forces. There were just so many aspects of a surf skate deck that were missing in all these other companies that to me were just obvious. And then along came the sole boarding. So let me show you what I love about the sole boarding. The first thing is foot placement. When you step onto a sole boarding, you'll see, first of all, look at how wide it is. At the widest point right here, I believe this deck is 10 and a quarter inches. And that I think is about the widest surf skate deck that I've ever tried. A lot that I've tried are about 10 inches. I think common you're gonna get uh, nine and a half to 10 inches. But the sole boardy at that widest point is 10 and a quarter inches. And so just talking about my front foot right here, that gives me so much room to work with and, and it makes it so that both my heel and my toe are on that board. And then the combination of the width with this concave that you've seen, what that means is I've got both my heel and my toe on the edge of the board and on concave, when I am pumping, I like to use a lot of heel toe action. And so what that allows me to do is have both heel and toe in really good pocket with concave so that the board is very, very responsive to the slightest heel toe movements. Now you compare that to say the Yao Pukas Dark, for example, and this is one of those decks where I was just so confused, I didn't understand it because the first time you stepped on it, look, I, when I'm pumping, I do so much heel toe rail to rail and both of my heel and my toe on this deck are completely off the board and there is absolutely no concave on this to lock my feet in either. And so it works, it will still respond to heel toe input, but just not nearly as responsive as that sole boarding. Now let's talk about the back foot placement. Here again, we see on the sole boarding, we have a very wide kicktail. Now this is actually something that's unique as well, which I find to be confusing because it's so intuitive to me. So you see a lot of these swallowtail designs. Now this Puka's Dark isn't horrible, but you'll see again how their kicktail is going in where the sole boardy is coming out. Same thing with the Spice Gate. I've just never understood tails like this because for me, the action of surf skating, so much of it is driven with my back foot. So much heel to toe like I'm talking about and just so much pushing side to side to drive that pump. And I also like room for my foot to move around a bit because you surfers can bend low like this. I can't do that so much so I can kind of turn my toe like this in order to get a deeper knee bend. So I just have all kinds of room to work with on this back foot. Whereas on some of these other ones, I'm just, you're just like, what, what are you supposed to do here? You really have just one little option. I'm losing so much torque and force on these other kicktail designs. Here again, you see on the Alpucas Dark, I just don't have any heel or toe on that. You see on this slide, I don't even know what to do on slide decks. There's really not even much of a kicktail. And I really think they, they're designed to be 
to re be written like this, which I don't like. I want some kicktail to work with so that I can really use that back foot to force those surf skate maneuvers. Another thing that you'll notice about this foot placement is that it will accommodate a variety of different stances. You could ride this deck like this if you wanted. You could have your back foot clear back on this kicktail. You can have, I personally like to ride my front foot at a bit of an angle like so. Some guys like to have it more straight like that. But in either case, it's perfect. It's perfect this way at an angle. You've got just such a perfect little pocket for that heel toe. And you can also just move around and dance around. You know, I'll, I'll even just kind of move around to rest a little bit. And, and you can even have the ability, there, if you have the ability, there's guys who will even do uh, step up on it and do cross steps up on it. So combination of the width and the concave and the wide kick tail just make for really, really comfortable foot placement. You really just feel totally like, it's like a combination of locked into this board with also freedom and flexibility. But when I pump this thing, my front foot isn't moving off of it like so many other decks, like this Yao Puka's Dark. I, the Puka's Dark, I stopped riding it after one or two rides because my front foot is just constantly moving around. I just don't have space for it and it just doesn't lock it in. So that's the first thing I love about the Soul Boardy is just that locked in perfect foot placement. The second thing I love about the Soul Boardy is the concave. As you have already seen from that visual demonstration, to me, this is just the perfect concave. The Smooth Star for me has a very deep concave, which works for its application, but for me, it's just not very comfortable long-term ride. And then you've got Yao decks, which are pretty much flat as a board. And then you've got Carver decks, which for me are a really great hybrid. And I actually really like all of my Carver decks that I've ever had. I do like the Soul Boardy better, but for me, of all the stock companies, Carver are far and away the best decks. So this concave thing is just another thing where as a total beginner, just coming into the mechanics of how you ride a surf skate, I was always so confused by the lack of concave, especially when I started buying Yao decks. I just was always like, listen, I'm pumping using lateral side to side forces. So doesn't it just make intuitive sense to me that you'd have some concave in there to lock your foot in so it's not sliding around all the time. But I slide around on this one, exact same thing on the spice gate. I got the spice gate and I was like, I, I just, I scratch my head at the lack of concave and wonder what is it that I'm missing here? All of these decks that I've ever ridden that have flat decks with not much concave, you can ride them and you can do a lot on them. But to me, it just makes intuitive sense with the mechanics of surf skating that you really want concave. And that's just my practical experience. Decks with better concave just work better. My feet just don't slide around as much and I really just get more performance out of them. The next thing I love about the sole boarding, which I've already covered in the foot placement, is this really big, wide, functional kicktail. But I wanna talk about something really special on it. This has what's called a convex tail. What that means is, a concave tail would dip up like so. The sole boardy does something very unique in that it actually is convex, where on the back, this kick tail curves down like that. What that means is your foot, that's why I'm going barefoot here so you can see just how your back foot will just mold, basically right over that perfect concave shape. So you feel like you're just home. And what that means is when you're doing those heel toe rolling back and forth weight shifts, it's just a very natural, comfortable fit. So the combination of the width of that tail and the concave make for something really special that I have not experienced in any other surf skate deck because it doesn't exist in any other surf skate deck. And then the final thing I want to touch on about this board is that it has what's called torsional flex. And what that means is it will flex this way through the body of it. Unlike this waterborne that I've talked about where this carbon material, this tail will actually flex this way. 
The sole boardy doesn't do that. It's not like you're, it has the flex where you're standing on that and your kicktail is flexing that way, but it is flexing this way. And so what that means is you get a true power transfer in that flex where it really just makes for like a very kind of lively ride. The best I can explain it is it's almost, it feels like the board is alive under your feet. It's like it's a living, breathing part of the experience. It's really a sensation unlike any other decks I've ever experienced. So that's it. That's what I love about the sole boardy. And when I explain it, it honestly doesn't sound very special because as I said, to me, they're all things that are just so obvious. Like if I, were to design a surfscape deck from scratch. It wouldn't be close to a masterful job as Draho can do, but it would have the same properties as the sole boardy. I would want it to be wide enough to where I can get both my heel and my toe on it for heel toe, rail to rail pumping. I would want some concave on it to lock my feet in. I would want a really solid wide kicktail for driving, pumping, and maneuvers. And I would want some flex to it to make it lively and responsive. So to me, what's remarkable about the Soul Boardy is that as revolutionary as it is on the surf skate scene, to me, it's just what's the most obvious way a surf skate deck should be designed. Now you might disagree and you might have a different riding style. I'm just explaining to you what I love about it and my experience with the 40 plus surf skates that I've tried. But to me, the Soul Boardy just does every single thing that I want out of a surf skate deck. And it does it in spades in a way that feels noticeably luxurious and functional and smooth and just awesome. So with all that said, now let's hear what my friend Gavin Conti has to say about the Soul Boardy. I am in Redondo Beach, California with the man who told me about the Soul Boardy in the first place. This is Gavin Conti from South Carolina. We met online. We've, this is the very first time we've met in person. I'm from Southern Utah. He's from South Carolina, but he took a family vacation out here in Redondo Beach and I took a road trip down to meet with him. Gavin is the very first person to ever get a Soul Boardy shipped to the US from Slovakia. And he's the one who told me about it shortly after he got it. So I got my Soul Boardy. And so it's kind of funny, Gavin and I showed up in Redondo Beach and we have the exact same setup. We have the Soul Boardy with the Yao Meraki trucks and the <laughs> Seismic Hotspot Defcons, which by the way, he told me about too as well because he's also a wheel expert. I wanted to get his take on it and add it to mine so you can really see the benefits of this Soul Boardy coming from somebody who is a much better rider, more experienced and way more experienced with decks and wheels and just all things from a more technical perspective of how things are made. So Gavin is a wealth of knowledge. He's been so helpful to me in this process and let's see what he has to t say about the Soul Boardy. Soul Boardy is, uh, is by far my favorite surf skate and there's a, a long list of reasons why to be honest. First thing you'll notice is the overall shape. You'll notice a very wide foot pocket. I believe they measured at about 10 and a quarter at its widest spot. For me and, and, uh, and some of the other people that have tried my setup, it seems to be a very good sweet spot of width and the shape kind of gives you a very nice foot pocket here. So this concave and in combination with the width, it really gives your foot a, a very comfortable home base to, to position off of for all sorts of maneuvers and all sorts of styles of riding. Now as we, we transition to the back here, the deck itself is actually rockered. It's not a centered rocker, it's a progressive rocker. So you have a little bit of its lowest spot is, is actually towards the rear here and it kind of slowly uh, slants upwards. So anyway, that rocker shape relieves a little bit of pressure on the knees uh, and it just generally feels really, really good when you're riding. The other unique thing that Soul Boardy has done here, which is an absolute home run in my opinion, is the convex tail. This is the opposite of what a lot of other board companies are doing. A lot of other board companies are doing concave tails where it's a, a you know, like a, a spoon shape. And that does uh, feel good too, uh, you know, but this convex tail has some very unique characteristics. It actually gives your feet a little bit of a rolling sensation from edge to edge. Uh, and what I think that's doing is it allows you to put your full weight into the edge of the board that you are leaning into. So, uh, you know, your heel will come up a little bit with that, with that shape and all of that weight is being pushed, you know, your, on your toe into that edge of the board. It goes the, the same for the other side as you transition, you know, the, the weight um, placement 
is very, very natural to those edges uh, when you're trying to generate grip from, from these wheels. Now, the other most notable unique thing about a Soulboardy, in my opinion, is the torsional flex. When you order a board and you talk to, to the, the guys over at Soulboardy, they do a lot to try and adjust uh, that, that specific deck that they're going to do for you to your weight and your riding style. So I know that they'll even look at uh, you, you know YouTube videos and Facebook videos or anything that the person might put up to try and understand a little bit more about that specific person and, and that specific deck that they're going to give you. The torsional flex here allows for a really natural transition uh, um, of weight placement between your feet. A stiff deck just feels like a plank of wood for me now and honestly the sole boardy has almost ruined all the other surf skate decks for me. That torsional flex in combination with the convex tail, the rocker, and that foot pocket up here really just uh, equates to the most natural and the most lively surf skate that I've ever tried. I think the name is very well uh, fitting. Soul boardy, I think these boards have soles. And in addition to just being generally beautiful. They do a Paulonia and bamboo core in their uh, revolution construction. This is a vertically laminated core, so you can see the strips that are pressed together from you know side to side here. And then they laminate it um, more conventionally with uh, different types of hardwoods on the top and bottom. So in this particular case, this is an oak top sheet and an oak bottom sheet. They told me, you know, based on what my weight and my what they saw as my riding style, this would be perfect, and I think they absolutely nailed it. So much so that I've purchased a couple of other decks behind this. This was my first one. They're an easy company to support. Soulboardy is uh, is the home run for surf skate decks for sure. Now I've also tried their decks with a couple of other trucks. Right here we have the Yao Meraki setup. This is my personal favorite for an all-around versatile surf skate. I've also tried Smooth Star, um, Slide V3, as well as Carver C7 on the uh, Soulboardy deck. All of them shine in their own unique ways um, on the Soulboardy deck. However, uh, I think the most versatile, in my opinion, is the Yao Meraki. One of the other things to touch on is the, is the um, different wheelbase options. So I think that the Soulboardy is very adaptable, and I haven't found a set of trucks that do not work well on this Soulboardy deck yet. Now I will say, uh, you know, they all have slightly different feels and, uh, um, and different axle placements in relation to their mounting holes. So for example, a slide V3, uh, I, I mount that on the rear set of, of holes instead of the top set of holes like I have here on the, uh, on the Meraki. So, um, you know, it's very adaptable with the different options here. Within that surf skate category, I think uh, a Soulboardy is the home run.